In this video, you're going to learn how to solve a system of linear equations three different ways. We're going to do the graphing method, we're going to do the substitution method, and then we're going to talk about the elimination method. So let's dive into this example. We've got these two equations, and we want to find out where exactly do they cross or intersect? What's that point that makes both equations true? Now, there's a couple different ways to do the graphing method, which we're going to do first. One way that students like to do this is to rearrange the equations into the slope-intercept form. That's the y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to do that with this top equation right here. And I'm just going to rewrite it a little bit here by getting that y by itself. And so I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. So that gives us negative 2y equals negative 3x minus 8. I'm going to divide everything by negative 2 to get that 1y by itself keeping the equation balanced. And so that gives us y equals 3 halves x plus 4. That's one of our equations. Now the second equation, we're going to graph this one by using the intercept method. And I'll show you that in just a second. But let's graph this one here first. So you can see that y equals the slope, which is m, in this case 3 halves, uh, mx plus b. The b is the y-intercept, that's 4. So in this case, we're going to go to the y-axis. We're going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a point there, and then our slope, rise 3, run 2. So from this point, I could go rise 3 and run 2 right about there. Or I could go negative 3 and negative 2, because down 3, down 2, that's both negative and negative by negative is a positive, which is still the same as positive 3 halves. So again, down 3 and left 2. And so that gives us that first line there. Now the second line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the intercept method. And the way we do the intercept method is we make a table and we set x equal to 0 and find the y-intercept, and then we set y equal to 0 to find the x-intercept. If I put 0 in for x, that's going to make the 0, and if I divide both sides by 4, 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. So that means it's going to cross the y-axis right here at 1 half. And then if I set y equal to 0, 0 times 4 is 0. So I'm just going to cover that up since 0 is nothing. And you can see that x is equal to 2. That's our x-intercept. That's crossing right here. And now you can see if I graph this line, okay, it looks something like that. And we can find the point of intersection, which here it looks to be at negative 2, positive 1. And we solve the system using the graphing method. Now, the downside to the graphing method is if your line's a little bit off, you know, say for example, you know, you just do it kind of quick or hurriedly, and you might find out that, oh, hey, it's hard to identify exactly where this point is uh, intersecting the other line, right, where these two lines cross. The other thing is, is that this one crossed at a nice uh, integer value. Sometimes it might cross at like a fraction, like a third or a fourth, and it's a little bit hard to identify exactly where that point is if it's a fraction like that. And that's where the algebraic methods, the substitution and the elimination methods uh, come in handy. Let's talk about the substitution method next. Now in the substitution method, you want to solve for one of the variables, meaning you either want to get this x by itself, this y by itself, this x by itself, or this y by itself. Now, to make it easier on yourself, try to get the variable by itself that has 1 as a coefficient. Uh, this way you'll avoid a lot of fractions. It'll make it easier to solve. So in this case, I'm going to isolate this x by subtracting 4y from both sides of this equation. So that's going to give us x equals 2 minus 4y. Now we know what x equals in terms of y. We can put that or substitute that in place of x and the other equation that we haven't used yet. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 3. Whenever you do a substitution, I like to put parentheses, that whole quantity, okay, in place of x, minus 2y is equal to negative 8. Now, sometimes a simple mistake that students sometimes make is they take this 2 minus 4y and they put it back into the same equation that they were using here originally, which you want to put it into the other equation that you haven't used. Okay, now we want to, we're going to distribute and just uh, simplify and solve. So we have 3 times 2, which is a positive 6. 3 times negative 4y is negative 12y. Minus 2y equals negative 8. Let's see, combining like terms, we get 6 minus 14y is equal to negative 8. Uh, let's get the variables on one side, numbers on the other. So subtract 6 from both sides. 
So we have negative 14y equals negative 14. Divide both sides by negative 14, and you can see that y is coming out to 1. So if we take that 1 now, we can plug it back in for y here, or here, or here. Any one of the equations, you'll get the same answer. Let's just put it in here since x is already by itself. So 4 times 1 is 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So you can see that x equals negative 2. And we're getting the same answer, negative 2 comma 1. That again just represents where these two lines are intersecting, that common point of intersection. Let's take a look now at the elimination way of solving this system. With the elimination method, what we want to do is we want to be able to add these two equations together to either eliminate the x variable or the y variable. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is, see how this is 3x? I want this to be negative 3x, so when I add these together, the x's cancel out. So in order to do that, I'm going to multiply this whole equation here, this bottom equation, by negative 3. So if I distribute that negative 3, left and right sides, okay, everything's getting multiplied by negative 3. It's the same equation, negative 3x minus 12y equals negative 6. I'm going to rewrite that first equation uh, right below it. And now you can see when I add straight down, see these x's are canceling one another out. So that just comes out to 0. This comes out to negative 14y when we add straight down, and this is equal to negative 14. We want to just solve for 1y, so I'll divide both sides by negative 14. And you can see that y is coming out to 1. Now in order to solve for x, you can take this y equals 1, and you can plug it into any one of these equations for y and solve for x. So I'm just going to go back up to, uh, uh, let's maybe do this top equation. So we have uh, 3 times x minus 2 times y, which is equal to 1, is equal to negative 8. And let's see, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Let's add 2 to both sides to get the numbers on one side, variables on the other. We get 3x equals negative 6, and if we divide both sides by 3, you can see that x is coming out to negative 2. And so now we have our point of intersection, negative 2 comma 1, the same as we got in the substitution method as well as in the graphing method, and you solve it. So depending on the situation, if you're given a graph, you might want to just look at where the two lines cross. If you're given the two equations, it might be easier to use the elimination method or you could use the substitution method. If you want to see more examples, you want to test yourself and get some more practice, I'll put a video right there where we talk more about substitution and elimination and you can practice those methods. I'll see you over in that video.